let's calculate a spring force. So here's here's part one. We want to get the vector L. So it's a vertical spring. Its stiffness is 30 newtons per meter, which means that if you compress it a, a meter, you'd get a force of 30 newtons, except that since it's only 12 centimeters long, you can't compress it a meter. Um, so the relaxed length is 12 centimeters, 0.12 meters. You push on it. Uh, you push it down, compressing it, so it's really your hand on there, not the block. So its length is now 10 centimeters. What's the vector L? Remember, L starts at the location that the spring is attached to its support. And it goes to the movable end of the spring. Okay, so what's L in this case? It starts at the, the place it's attached to a support, goes to the movable end. Now, there are a lot of quantities that you could calculate here, but we're asking you to only determine one of them. So make sure that you're determining the quantity the question is asking for. So which is the movable end of the spring, the top or the bottom? The top. It's attached to the floor on the bottom, isn't it? So can you draw a vector L from the place where it's attached to the movable end? Okay, now that wasn't so hard, was it? You can change your answer. That's cool. Okay, so you can do this. You can you can apply this. So that's correct. Okay, so so the vector starts where it's attached, goes to the movable end. So it's going straight up. You can show me that. That's plus y, isn't it? Yeah. And then. How long is the spring? Well, it seems to be 0.1 meter long at the moment. So, yeah. Okay? So you're right. Good. Next question. What is the stretch S? Same situation. Okay, so 4 is the most popular answer. And indeed, 4 is correct. So you said L was 0 0.1 0 meters. So the magnitude of L is just 0 0.1 meter. And so the stretch is 0.1 meter minus 0.12 meters, which is negative 0.02 meters. So that's the stretch. It comes out negative because the spring is compressed. That's right. Yes. So the question was, in what case would you not add V initial plus final, V final and divide by 2 to get an average velocity to predict position. The answer is in a case where the force is not constant, and that's going to be our case here. So let's take the next step, calculate the force, the magnitude of the force here. So you calculated. So what's the magnitude of the force the spring is exerting on your hand now? You decided the stretch was negative 0.02 meters. What's the magnitude of the force the spring is exerting on your hand? OK, it looks like 1. So let's see, how, let's see how you calculated this. So we have the full vector equation. The spring force is minus K sub S, S, L hat. The magnitude of the spring force is the magnitude of that, which is the absolute value of minus K sub S times the absolute value of S times the magnitude of L hat. Magnitude of a unit vector is 1. The K sub S looks like 30 newtons per meter. 
you just calculated the stretch. You told me the stretch was 0.02 meters. So that does indeed look like 0.6 newtons. So you comfortable with that? Questions about that? So let's put it together and write the vector force. Let's do it. So the, f the spring force is going to be minus, actually we can just take the magnitude and multiply by L hat. So we have F spring is 0.6 newtons. Uh, well, let's let's work it out. We have minus k sub s s l hat, so that's minus 30 newtons per meter times 0.02 meters l hat. Well, I remember l. It's this case, right? So l was zero. 0 0.10 meters. So what's L hat? Just by inspection. What's the unit vector in that direction? 0, 1, 0. So, and what? Ne yes, negative stretch. Sorry. Exactly. Thank you. And so, this is going to come out to 0 0.6, 0 newtons. So there's really not that much to it. But what we want to do is predict the motion of this system up and down for a while. So we want to predict, um, what we want to do is apply this iterative procedure and predict the motion of this a mass on a spring. We're going to use, we're going to talk through an example that's actually worked out in the book. Um, so we're going to, Start a mass sitting on a vertical spring that's compressed. Um, and you don't need to write down any numbers because this truly is worked out in the book. What we want to do here, the point of doing this here now is to think through the process, to sort of wrap our heads around the process. So it has a relaxed length of 20 centimeters, so 0.2 meters. In fact, let's write everything in meters so we don't make unit conversion problems. We, uh, the spring stiffness of this spring is 8 newtons per meter, so it's not a very stiff spring. The mass of the block is 60 grams, so 0 0.06 kilograms. And so you push it down so that initially the length of the spring is 10 centimeters, so you've compressed it, and then you let it go. We want to know what's going to happen to the spring. So bef and what we're going to do is we're going to do this procedure. So we're going to calculate the net force on the spring, calculate its new momentum, find its new position, and some things will have changed. So we'll need to recalculate some things. So let's think about what we're going to have to recalculate here. 
So we're going to do this over and over again. And we want to know what's happened. We want to do this for 0.3 seconds. We, that's probably kind of a big time step, though. So we're probably going to divide it into three tenth second time steps. 